Hello, everyone. I am again very happy as we have another wonderful occasion of online biological sciences seminar series of Tubitak Research Institute for Fundamental Sciences, which were organized for national and international audiences, relying on the unifying feature of science in a unique intellectual space and trying to minimize the negative impacts of COVID-19 situation in the world on scientific thought and it is creation. With this in, with this in mind, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome all of you joining us through the Zoom platform, as well as watching us through all social media platforms of TUBITAC, the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey. Now, it is also my great pleasure and honor to introduce you our tonight's speaker, Professor Eugene Kunin, world-renowned biologist, a world star of virology from National Center for Biotechnology Information, National Library of Medicine and National Institutes of Health of United States. He's going to give a great talk about the world of viruses, its global organization and evolution. At the end of the talk, we will have a session for questions the questions can be asked by sending a message through the chat button of the Zoom platform. Professor Kunin and his research group employ existing, existing and new methods of computational biology to perform research in several major areas, such as empirical comparative and evolutionary genomics, deciphering general evolutionary trends, exploitation of genomic comparison, classification and evolutionary analysis of protein domains and domains architecture, origin and evolution of viruses. Professor Kunin received his PhD in molecular biology in 1983 from the Department of Biology Moscow State University. He was a research scientist at the Institute of Poliomyelitis of the Russian Academy of Sciences, and subsequently a senior research scientist and laboratory chief at the Institute of Microbiology of the Russian Academy of Sciences. In 1991, Professor Kunin joined the National Center for Biotechnology Information of United States. He has a number of honors. In particular, in 2018, he received, along with Andrei Linde, Georgi Gamov Prize. And in 2019, he received honor as NIH Distinguished Investigator for his outstanding achievements. Professor Kunin is a member of American Academy of Microbiology. Fellow of the American College of Medical Informatics. Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. A member of National Academy of Sciences of United States. And foreign associate of the European Molecular Biology Organization. At this point, I want to draw your attention the following words by Professor Eugene Kunin. Professor Kunin says, science is not just a job or even career. It is a way of living and thinking. It is effectively a devotion or dedication to creative but rational thinking. These are things that can apply to everything and anything in the world. With this, I want to thank once again Professor Eugene Kunin for joining us for this seminar. We are really looking forward to it. Over to you, Eugene. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and thank you very much all for joining the seminar. Uh, thank you very much, Alikram, for, for the too flattering introduction. Uh, I will now start sharing my screen. Uh, and um, uh, while I'm 
setting up the presentation. Um, I just want to say that it's a, such a great pleasure for me uh, and an honor, of course, to um, participate uh, um, in this seminar series. Um, shamefully, I would say, I have never been to Turkey. Uh, it, it, although I always wanted to. Uh, uh, and it's, it's some consolation, it's a pleasure to visit at least virtually. So uh, tonight uh, we shall talk about the world of viruses, its global organization and uh, um, uh, evolution. Uh, so as Ali Kram alluded to in his introduction, uh, I have many um, areas of research in which I'm actively engaged. But these days when I'm invited to give a lecture, unless there is a more specific mandate, uh, I usually choose this subject. Uh, mm, uh, the world of viruses is overall architecture and evolution. Uh, mm, and there are two reasons for this. Sort of the mm, general ultimate reason and the immediate proximate reason. The immediate reason is very clear. Uh, we are living uh, mm, uh, through the completely unprecedented, devastating, pandemic of the coronavirus uh, that has dramatically changed our lives and unfortunately has taken many lives over uh, mm, uh, mm, the last 15 months or so. Hopefully they are much closer to the end of this pandemic than to the beginning, but we are living through this. Um, and mm, since now uh, virology is, is the very forefront of everyone's pretty much everyone's thinking in the world, what I'm trying to do is to give a perspective on viruses, to um, explain, um, to present a broader perspective, to explain um, uh, that uh, the world of viruses is diverse, uh, um, vast and beautiful in itself, uh, not at all limited to coronavirus or other um, virus pathogens, but all these find their place in, a, in particular parts of that viral universe, as we shall see. Uh, this is the approximate reason why I want to talk on, on this subject. Uh, the, the more fundamental reason uh, is related to this um, quote from Albert Einstein uh, that I put on this uh, first slide of my lecture. Um, uh, the fact that the world is uh, comprehensible is a miracle. Uh, mm, uh, mm, wrote Einstein uh, mm, sometime after he uh, completed the general uh, uh, theory, of the theory of general relativity. Uh, mm, and indeed, uh, it's very striking, there are no miracles per se, uh, but, but it's very striking uh, mm, when we start realizing uh, that we could, in a certain meaningful sense, understand a uh, mm, uh, uh, large part of the universe uh, surrounding us. And this understanding uh, to a significant extent means putting in order, understanding the general organization. And this is, as I will try to show in the next 45 minutes or so, um, the stage that we have approached in um, exploring the world of viruses. So I want to share uh, mm, uh, this uh, emerging understanding with you. And the first thing that I want to see, um, uh, which is important to keep in mind, uh, mm, is that uh, mm, uh, viruses are the dominant entities uh, in our biosphere. Uh, outside of uh, the virology, virus ecology, I strongly suspect people do not think tend to think that way. That, uh, they would think that the dominant biological entities uh, on the planet are animals, plants, perhaps bacteria uh, for um, microbiologists, but not viruses. On the other, all, all those are crucially important. But in a sense, viruses take a special place. Because if you just count virus particles, uh, um, in different habitats, say in sea water or in soil, or even in the content of our own intestine, uh, uh, you will get astronomical and hyperastronomical numbers. Uh, um, say in one cubic centimeter of uh, um, uh, sea water, if you go to the 
um, to the uh, Mediterranean outside outside your institute, uh, um, uh, you will get something between a million and a billion virus particles from astronomical to hyperastronomical number, uh, um, primarily uh, bacteria phage. Uh, um, typically, although not far from uniformly, uh, um, uh, uh, there are many more viruses per the same volume uh, in any habitat, two to uh, one to two orders of the magnitude more than there are cells of any kind. Uh, um, and if we um, switch to Earth-wide counts, uh, there are at any given moment uh, um, uh, about uh, um, 10 to the um, 30, 31st uh, um, virus particles. This is literally a hyper-astronomical number uh, because uh, there are about uh, um, 10 to the uh, power 24 uh, stars in the observable part of our uh, um, uh, universe. So uh, um, the um, number of um, uh, viruses uh, on our planet at any given moment is about uh, um, 10 million times greater. Um, something that is so abundant uh, uh, simply cannot be uh, um, uh, unimportant for understanding uh, um, the nature, evolution, and ecology of life in general. But there are other reasons to believe viruses are crucially important. First of all, uh, um, viruses, uh, in addition to their sheer abundance, uh, um, viruses uh, um, uh, present the greatest uh, genetic diversity observable on Earth. Uh, they present the principal uh, reservoir of novel genes, of genetic novel. Uh, mm, second of all, uh, or second already, uh, mm, or maybe third or fourth, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, viruses are uh, the emergence of genetic parasites, uh, such as viruses, is an intrinsic mm, uh, feature or intrinsic trait of, of evolving life. Wherever you find life, you will find viruses. Uh, I will not really go for a theoretical argument uh, um, uh, in, in, in this lecture, it requires a separate one, uh, um, uh, but uh, um, we, we and others have developed a theoretical um, um, argument uh, showing that emergence of viruses is inevitable uh, in the course of evolution of uh, life. And it goes hand in hand with empirical argument. That is, uh, whenever uh, any uh, organisms, any group of organisms, any type of uh, cellular life forms is explored in any detail, you will find viruses integrated in the genome or otherwise, but you will find viruses. Then again, this is not all uh, mm, uh, about the fundamental importance of viruses. Uh, mm, viruses have show unprecedented diversity of the cycles of uh, mm, uh, re uh, replication and expression of uh, genetic uh, uh, information. As first uh, captured by the um, outstanding uh, um, virologist and biologist, uh, David Baltimore, exactly uh, 50 years ago. Uh, 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 oh, sorry. Uh, so uh, in all cellular organisms, uh, uh, the uh, uh, um, the strategy of uh, uh, genetic information replication and expression is governed by what is known by central dogma of molecular biology. Uh, the flow of genetic information goes from double-stranded DNA, which is our genome, uh, and bacterial genome and archaeal genome, uh, um, to uh, various kinds of RNA molecules, some of which are structural uh, and function by themselves, uh, and others, the majority, are messenger RNAs, uh, that serve as template for translation for uh, protein uh, mm, uh, synthesis. Uh, mm, this is a universal of cellular life. These three components, double-stranded DNA, RNA, and protein, uh, mm, and information flowing in this direction, overwhelmingly. Viruses uh, mm, are not quite like that. There is a, granted, there is a large class of viruses, the largest altogether probably, uh, uh, that follows the same 
uh, core sub in, um, information transfer. Uh, but uh, there are also in the world of viruses, also realized how all, all other um, um, imaginable uh, ways of um, genetic information transfer. In particular, uh, there are viruses whose genomes represent not double-stranded uh, DNA, uh, but small single-stranded DNA uh, molecules uh, that are then converted into a double-stranded replicative form, uh, which in turn is used to produce messenger RNA for virus protein. Then there is something even more unusual from the point of view of solar organisms, namely RNA virus. There are all three possible classes, and they're abundant, they're common, uh, as we now know, uh, 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 in, the, in the world. Uh, and there are all possible classes. The simplest uh, positive sense RNA viruses, whereby uh, mRNA itself is encapsulated into, into variants and can be used directly in infected cells to uh, produce virus proteins, uh, negative sense uh, RNA viruses where it's a complement of messenger RNA, which is included in interference, and finally double-stranded um, RNA viruses where it's a hybrid of these molecules that is um, incorporated into the virus particles. And then uh, there are also reverse transcribing viruses uh, that um, incorporate uh, either um, um, positive sense RNA, single-stranded RNA, or double-stranded DNA into the viruses, but are unified by the fact uh, that they use reverse transcription, uh, that is synthesis of DNA on an RNA template uh, in the course of their uh, replication. In other words, crucially, uh, among viruses, they find effectively all imaginable diversity of possible cycles of uh, mm, uh, biological information uh, mm, replication and transfer, suggesting the enticing possibility uh, mm, uh, that viruses actually represent, so to speak, nature's original genetic test system, uh, mm, uh, the uh, mm, relics of, of the mm, um, uh, different types of replication that have been, so to speak, tried by evolution before it, fo um, uh, um, uh, it focused uh, on the uh, single evolution transmission pathway uh, implemented in all cellular life forms. We shall explore uh, this possibility in today's discussion. Before I go there, uh, um, uh, I would like to indicate that these uh, Baltimore classes of viruses show a very interesting non-trivial uh, distribution uh, among different types of hosts. For instance, um, in bacteria, uh, the great uh, and and in archaea, uh, uh, the uh, great uh, majority of viruses are double-stranded DNA viruses, similar in their uh, replication and expression to cellular life forms. There is a significant minority of single-stranded DNA viruses, uh, uh, and effectively almost no uh, RNA viruses, small minority, uh, but. Uh, uh, eukaryotes are dramatically different in that regard. Uh, the majority of viruses in animals, including ourselves, uh, and especially in plants, are actually RNA viruses, mostly positive cells, but also others, as well as reverse transcribing viruses, uh, uh, whereas uh, DNA viruses represent a minority, uh, albeit significant. Uh, uh, so this rather striking pattern of the distribution of viruses in the biosphere uh, requires an explanation. We are trying to find it. So let us first discuss the origins of viruses. Uh, um, undoubtedly, uh, one of the most uh, uh, fundamental deep problems uh, in, I dare say, definitely in evolutionary biology, and I dare say in all of uh, biology. Uh, there are three classes of hypotheses that have been considered for in the literature for about a century since first viruses have been explored in any detail um, in the second decade of the 20th uh, century. And up to this day, um, to mention first are virus early hypotheses, so to speak, 
which postulate uh, uh, that uh, uh, viruses uh, have evolved from primordial replicons uh, um, that existed uh, um, uh, prior to the advent uh, of the modern uh, um, type cells some 4 billion years ago. Uh, clearly, uh, um, uh, this, this uh, um, uh, idea, at least in its more in modern incarnation, uh, capitalizes on the diversity of the cycles of virus uh, um, replication uh, um, uh, um, uh, and expression that we discussed uh, a minute ago. Uh, um, uh, the uh, um, uh, second uh, um, uh, class of hypotheses are the so-called regression hypotheses uh, um, uh, or de degradation, reductive evolution hypotheses, if you will, uh, um, uh, which uh, postulate uh, that viruses, the ultimate parasite, parasites as they are, have evolved from intracellular parasitic uh, um, uh, bacteria gradually um, being reduced to the uh, virus state. Uh, the um, recent discovery of um, uh, giant viruses uh, that we are going to discuss towards uh, the uh, um, uh, end of, of this lecture added fuel uh, to this type of explanation of virus origin. And finally, um, last but not least, perhaps uh, the most uh, popular hypothesis on the origin of viruses uh, have to do with the so-called escape genes uh, concept, uh, namely that uh, viruses that viruses originate from uh, genes of cellular organisms that uh, somehow have broken uh, with the with the original host and have become autonomous uh, replicators. For most of the twentieth century. Uh, the uh, uh, discussion of these possibilities, um, however interesting and fundamentally important, remain essentially speculative and therefore did not take the central stage uh, uh, in, the, uh, in evolutionary biology. This has changed with the uh, massive uh, progress of um, genomics of viruses and hosts. Uh, I should note, we should noted even a minute ago, but I will note now uh, that um, a major aspect and a major challenge in the um, uh, study of the evolution of viruses is uh, that there isn't a single gene uh, that would be universally conserved in all kinds of viruses, uh, much unlike the ribosomal RNA and many components of the translation system and some components of the transcription system that are universally con conserved uh, among all cellular organisms from uh, the smallest bacteria, even parasitic bacteria, uh, to, to mammals and plants. Uh, about 100 genes are universally conserved among all uh, cellular organisms. This is uh, patently not the case among viruses. So you cannot, in principle, ever build a single phylogenetic tree of virus. However, this is one side of the coin. The other side of the coin that gives us more, that gives us leverage to understand, uh, to try and understand the evolution of viruses is the existence of a certain relatively small number of so-called virus hallmark genes that encode key proteins involved in virus replication uh, and, uh, and the formation of uh, virion structure. Uh, I can schematically show the um, structures of some of these proteins, the most common ones on this uh, um, uh, slide. Uh, um, and these are uh, um, double general and single general, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, um, um, double general and single general capsid proteins, um, RNA dependent RNA polymerases, reverse transcriptases, uh, um, rolling circle replication initiation and the nucleases and certain variety of helicases. And I could add about the same number of other hallmark genes um, that um, um, are connectors, that are hubs in the uh, evolutionary, uh, in the network of the relationship between different viruses. 
connecting specifically these different Baltimore clusters, the clusters of viruses with uh, different replication uh, expression cycles and giving us the chance by comparison, by, by studying the evolutionary provenance of, of the and connections between uh, uh, these hallmark genes um, to get insight into uh, the deep early evolution and even origin of viruses. And so we did uh, in the last few years uh, with my colleagues, in particular, uh, Mark Krupovich of Institut Pasteur uh, in Paris, uh, we undertook a concerted effort uh, to look into the deep roots of the proteins uh, that uh, um, mediate uh, replication uh, and structure formation in different uh, uh, classes of viruses. Uh, and so to begin with the replication modules, uh, be, behind and underneath uh, the remarkable diversity of these replication machineries, uh, we glean extreme uniformity and in fact, simplicity. In the sense that the principal uh, replication enzymes of all viruses are all built around the same simple protein fold. The so-called RRM or RNA recognition motif uh, domain, which is schematically shown right here. Uh, uh, this is a very simple basic arrangement of these four beta strands decorated with these two alpha helices, sometimes with additional embellishments, of course, but this is the core um, uh, structure that is in the heart of all mm, uh, mm, principal replicate um, enzymes that are involved in the um, initiation and elongation of the mm, uh, replication of uh, viral genomes, both RNA and DNA. Uh, mm, so mm, uh, this is a very deep evolutionary root. Uh, uh, this is one of the uh, most universal R nucleic acid binding domain um, on uh, domains on Earth, uh, which um, gives us some confidence in that uh, um, uh, the roots of the of virus replication go to the primordial RNA world, where, uh, um, as, as it seems uh, overwhelmingly likely. Uh, this domain emerged originally as a cofactor of ribozyme RNA polymerases and subsequently evolved various kinds of enzymatic to greatly facilitate and accelerate replication. We then uh, looked uh, um, uh, in a similar manner into the roots of virus morphogenetic uh, modules. Uh, that is the structural protein. Uh, the capsid proteins and other uh, major structural proteins of virions. And, the, and here, here we see um, a very different picture. Uh, what we find uh, um, uh, is that uh, um, for the majority of, of the um, uh, virus structural proteins, and the list is growing. This, this is a picture of about three years ago, uh, and, and the list uh, uh, is growing. Uh, we identify clear cellular ancestors, suggesting that unlike the, uh, the uh, central components of the replication machinery, the structural components of viruses have been captured from the host at different uh, stages of evolution, some of these indeed at very early stages. So taken together, uh, mm, uh, these uh, mm, observations lead us uh, mm, to the unifying, so to speak, chimeric scenario of uh, virus origin, uh, whereby uh, mm, viruses evo have evolved uh, mm, on mm, a certain number of independent occasions, and maybe a couple dozen independent occasions in the history of life, uh, mm, um, as a result of primordial replicators recruiting uh, mm, uh, virion, uh, major virion structural components from their host. So 
uh, uh, this concept of the virus origin, uh, which uh, um, I strongly believe is now uh, best compatible with all the available data, uh, is in a sense a hybrid uh, between virus early and escape genes, concepts of virus origin and evolution, those that I showed a few uh, um, um, slides ago. Slides ago. Uh, um, so I think we now have this kind of good window of um, revealing the uh, um, uh, complex origin of viruses uh, um, during the uh, evolution of life, starting the, the primordial RNA world, uh, but including also much later in this. Okay. Uh, um, so this was our glimpse into the deep past, into the uh, origin and the earliest evolution of viruses. And now we will go uh, um, uh, back to the present uh, um, and talk for a moment about more uh, practical matters. As I mentioned uh, um, in the beginning, uh, um, uh, we now have a much better grasp of the world of viruses. As it happens almost all the time, uh, at least in much of science, at least, and especially in biology, uh, um, uh, this progress uh, has been driven by empirical, by accumulation of empirical data. In particular, uh, uh, by uh, accumulation of uh, virus genomic sequences, uh, which uh, in the last few years has been dramatically advanced by metaviromics. Uh, that is uh, by uh, sequencing virus genomes directly from, from the environment, bypassing the, the limiting stage of growing viruses on, um, on a host uh, in the laboratory and thereby uh, giving us a chance uh, to look at unbiased, um, to look at the diversity of viruses that actually exist on this planet in different parts, on different parts of this planet uh, in an uh, unbiased uh, manner. Uh, the reality of it is, uh, uh, that uh, um, for the last few years, a substantial majority or a growing majority of uh, um, new viruses are being discovered, not by traditional methods of, um, that involve, um, that are painstaking, that involve um, uh, isolation of viruses uh, um, from a host, um, um, followed by um, adaptation of viruses to a laboratory host or cell culture, growing, isolating virus, et cetera, et cetera, uh, but rather by direct sequencing in the uh, um, uh, of virus genome from the environment, metaviromics. Uh, um, so prominent uh, um, and dominant uh, metaviromics have become uh, that the International uh, Committee on Taxonomy of uh, Viruses has actually made a revolutionary step uh, of uh, admitting the discovery of new, um, official admitting uh, uh, the discovery of new viruses and new groups of families and higher groups of uh, viruses purely through metaviromic uh, um, sequencing. This slide will show you why this radical step has been inevitable. Uh, this is also a somewhat outdated slide about um, three years old, uh, um, which uh, um, shows uh, um, the contribution of uh, um, metaviromics um, um, to um, um, sequencing uh, um, uh, to the um, known diversity of uh, virus genomes. So on the um, horizontal axis here, uh, we have a, a, a prevalence of uh, different uh, um, uh, viruses um, in, in different locations in the world ocean. This is data. Uh, from the Tara uh, Ocean Metagenomic Expedition. Uh, um, uh, so in how many of those stations in the ocean the given genome has been detected? Uh, and this is a log, a log of um, abundance. And so uh, you can see uh, these color circles here uh, correspond to viruses that have been um, previously isolated by traditional means, viruses with known host. And the, um, gray circles respond to those viruses that, uh, uh, that are known only uh, from 
uh, meta uh, virons. You can see with much clarity uh, that the uh, um, uh, gray circles dominate, the metaviromic sequences dominate. Uh, moreover, uh, the most abundant ones and the most frequent, the most common ones, all come from metaviromics. Remember, this is logarithmic scale. This is very significant. Um, uh, and of course, if I make, if I remake this figure based on today's data, um, uh, this will be uh, um, a far more dramatic picture. Uh, um, so uh, um, it, the present reality is uh, that metaviromics actually dominates, dominates the study of virus diversity. And over the last, the, the next uh, several minutes, uh, we shall explore the expansion of different parts of the virus world brought about primarily uh, by metaviromics. Mm. Let's start with RNA viruses. Um, so some three years ago, my colleagues and I uh, have uh, harnessed the uh, available uh, um, um, genomic data, uh, primarily indeed, uh, um, as discussed, uh, coming from uh, uh, metaviromics uh, to try uh, and uh, um, construct uh, um, uh, the uh, um, uh, comprehensive phylogeny, uh, comprehensive, uh, construct the comprehensive evolutionary history of uh, um, RNA of, of the global RNA uh, viral. Uh, here it's very important to, uh, to note uh, uh, that although there is not a single universal phylogenetic marker among viruses. There is one, fortunately, among all RNA viruses. The RNA-dependent RNA polymerase gene uh, encoding the enzyme uh, responsible for the replication of virus RNA genome and its transcription to produce uh, messenger um, RNAs is universally conserved uh, among RNA viruses and serves as the, so to speak, 16S RNA uh, for this part of the virus world. So you, you can make a single phylogenetic tree, which we try to do. It's uh, uh, given the um, a large number of, um, of viral genomes uh, and the extreme diversity, this is a fairly complicated uh, um, uh, bioinformatic process, um, uh, which uh, procedure which required construction of a dedicated pipeline that is published that I will not discuss and that is being uh, um, uh, constantly refined um, in our ongoing studies, and by running that pipeline and post-processing the results, uh, we produce a phylogenetic tree of about 5,000 reverse uh, RNA-dependent uh, uh, RNA polymerases rooted by um, uh, homologous but more decent reverse transcriptases. Uh, um, and here this tree just showed um, um, uh, schematically, uh, we will look into the specifics on the next slide, uh, and I just want to um, um, uh, indicate uh, the uh, um, uh, contribution of metaviromic sequences shown in blue here, uh, uh, that are here uh, about 50% of, of the um, um, RNA-dependent RNA polymerases, uh, of distinct RNA-dependent RNA polymerases. And when they are redoing this uh, um, procedure, uh, uh, later, a uh, um, year or two later, uh, as we shall see in a few moments, uh, that fraction only increases. So this is the um, schematic of the uh, resulting universal phylogenetic tree encompassing all the known diversity of um, RNA uh, viruses. Um, the sequence diversity is high here, uh, and it's difficult to be uh, um, fully confident in the tree topology, uh, but um, satisfyingly, we do reveal uh, um, uh, five major branches that are very well um, supported statistically uh, and I think are uh, quite uh, solid, solidly established divisions of um, um, RNA viruses. Uh, three of these uh, comprise positive, primarily positive, since RNA viruses with some um, admixture in the middle of this group of double-stranded uh, uh, RNA uh, viruses. The fourth consists solely of double-stranded RNA viruses, and the fifth includes negative sense RNA viruses that grow 
on the middle uh, um, of the um, double-stranded RNA virus group. Uh, um, so uh, according to these three, and I think this can be considered firmly established, uh, the positive sense RNA viruses, both in the simplest um, um, replication expression uh, cycle came first, uh, um, and they came first in prokaryotes, because this deepest group includes uh, this family Levi Viride, which are RNA bacteriophages, such as the famous Q beta and MS2, uh, from which all the enormous diversity of RNA viruses of eukaryotes uh, um, uh, have evolved. Uh, whereas um, uh, double stranded RNA viruses uh, evolved on two independent occasions from the midst of positive sense RNA viruses and negative sense RNA viruses, apparently evolved from the midst of double strand RNA viruses. Of course, uh, we live now um, at the times of coronavirus, whether they like it or not. Um, so um, uh, I could not refrain from indicating its position uh, in this tree. And it sits in this group, Nidovirales, is the order of viruses in which uh, um, uh, the coronavirus is uh, uh, one of the families and the beta coronaviruses, where the unfortunate SARS-CoV-2 uh, begins, is just one um, uh, branch um, within the coronavirus family. As you see, it um, sits uh, deep uh, among other diverse RNA viruses, including very well known, um, such as picornaviruses uh, and Kelly viruses, polio, noroviruses, and others, as well as less well characterized uh, viruses. Um, infecting all um, kinds of hosts, animals, uh, pl all kinds of eukaryotic hosts, animals, uh, plants, and proteins. And I also mapped here uh, the position of other important, some of the other important um, um, uh, human uh, pathogens among RNA viruses, such as hepatitis C viruses, um, the discovery of which was marked by the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine uh, last year, influenza right here among the negative sense and Ebola uh, in two branches of negative sense RNA uh, uh, viruses. Um, so this, uh, this is, I think, a crucial point uh, that um, uh, these uh, infamous um, uh, human uh, pathogens are just branches, uh, small branches. However, uh, whatever their practical importance in the big tree of RNA virus. Um, so basically, I, will, I don't have to dwell here because I, I think I already made uh, uh, these conclusions. I just want to indicate uh, that we seem to be succeeding in establishing a rather clear order in the RNA virus sphere. Um, once we have the tree, the tree is not perhaps even so much important in itself. Uh, the tree uh, is, is crucially important as a scaffold uh, for uh, reconstructing various kinds of evolutionary events uh, 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 that occur in the, in the given uh, part of the biological world, in this case, among uh, RNA viruses. And this is what we did uh, by mapping uh, the uh, uh, presence of, um, of different proteins and domains in different groups of RNA viruses and then uh, performing uh, um, uh, reconstruction using the appropriate statistical methods. Um, um, what we see here is a trend towards genome complexification. That is, uh, viruses um, in um, each of these branches originate as very simple forms, um, pretty much encoding only the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase and the single capsid protein. Mm -hmm. and then capturing various kinds of domains, in particular, most interestingly, independently, uh, mm, capturing mm, RNA helicases of um, mm, uh, different uh, families that apparently uh, mm, enable replication of large uh, mm, uh, RNA uh, genomes. Large only means, in this case, something like greater than six kilobases, but that's large. Uh, by uh, the standards of the uh, world of RNA viruses. And uh, uh, remarkably, 
the pinnacle of this complexification trend are none other than the coronaviruses. Uh, uh, these are uh, the most complex known RNA genomes uh, um, uh, that reach uh, the gigantic for RNA viruses size of uh, a little over 40 uh, kilobases through the accretion of the um, great variety of um, different domains, many of which, as we now are learning, uh, play important role in pathogenesis of virus diseases, coronavirus disease. All right. I um, don't have all that much time uh, um, uh, uh, now, uh, and there are still many uh, um, uh, things that I want to tell you. Uh, um, uh, so very quickly, in another project that I will very briefly describe uh, um, with a group of colleagues, uh, um, uh, we uh, um, uh, explored uh, um, a single, albeit large, uh, um, uh, RNA metaviral uh, um, uh, uh, that was uh, um, characterized from a, from a uh, single site in, in China, uh, in the estuary of the Yangtze River. Um, and it was just a large sample of the very rich opaque water uh, from, the, from that uh, habitat. Uh, the result of the, of the analysis of, of this metagenome her, was completely striking in that by exploring this single metagenome, we managed to double the known diversity of RNA viruses, uh, moving from about 5,000 uh, distinct clusters of viruses to more than 10,000, mm. indicating uh, mm, uh, uh, that uh, mm, the diversity, the uh, mm, plentitude of the diversity of RNA viruses that remains to be uh, explored in the uh, biosphere is enormous. They are not even at the level of rel clusters of relatively closely related viruses, uh, such as in the current classification virus genera. Uh, they are not even, we cannot even think of saturation uh, just yet. But the other side of the coin is that basically all and each of these newly detected viruses fall into one of these five major branches in the tree, indicating in the previously constructed tree, indicating uh, uh, that at this higher level of the hierarchy, we probably already know the main divisions of um, RNA viruses. Of course, that does not mean that there aren't really interesting and novel things to uh, um, discover, novel viruses to discover, uh, um, uh, and we did indeed discover such interesting and novel viruses with very um, specific rearrangements in the, in the genomes, in the um, uh, organizations of RNA-dependent RNA polymerases, in terms of the acquisition of new domains in various different uh, uh, respects. But all these nevertheless um, fall within the previously established main divisions of um, RNA uh, viruses. So not to dwell on this, uh, but I believe we now have a clear-cut scenario for the overall scenario for the evolution of the RNA virus there. And now what I want to do in the remaining short time is to give you a brief tour of the rest of the virus uh, world and the general structure of the virus universe. That will be very um, uh, brief and perhaps perfunctory, but still gives you um, some idea, hope. Uh, so the reverse transcriptase virus sphere, uh, retroviruses such as the infamous HIV, hepatina viruses such as the equally infamous hepatitis B virus, and some less known reverse transcribing viruses that are not found in any um, uh, prokaryotes, but are virtually universal um, as, as a um, class, um, as a group um, among um, eukaryotes. The main message here 
uh, uh, is about the same as we had with RNA viruses, namely that they can readily and reliably establish the overall structure of the phylogenetic tree based on the phylogenetic analysis of the reverse transcriptases. The single strand DNA virus sphere. Uh, mm, the small viruses uh, mm, uh, that uh, mm, uh, contain uh, mm, uh, single stranded DNA genomes, uh, mm, usually, but not always, uh, circular, and usually, uh, as always, uh, replicating through the so called rolling circle replication uh, mm, uh, mechanism. Uh, mm, uh, working with Mark Kropovich, uh, mm, we uh, mm, um, uh, discovered. Uh, a very interesting route of evolution of these uh, viruses, which appear to have originated on uh, multiple independent occasions from plasmids, not viruses, but plasmids, replicating by these small plasmids, replicating by this rolling circle uh, mechanism through mm, capture of capsid proteins from eukaryotic RNA viruses, the kind of viruses we have been talking uh, about uh, before. So uh, this chimeric um, a scenario of evolution uh, recapitulated on several independent uh, occasions. Most interestingly, um, the single stranded DNA viruses also gave rise to small double stranded DNA viruses, which include important pathogens such as human pathogens. Finally, uh, the double stranded DNA virus sphere, which is more complex than any other. Uh, uh, part uh, of the uh, um, biosphere for which uh, uh, there is no universal marker like the RNA dependent RNA polymerase in the RNA biosphere. And therefore, we have to turn to different methodologies of uh, um, uh, evolutionary analysis, uh, um, uh, such as uh, you know, the analysis, the study of uh, um, networks of gene uh, sharing. Uh, by exploring uh, uh, such uh, networks where genomes of viruses are connected together uh, through um, shared homologous genes, uh, uh, we um, identify using the appropriate methods uh, for network dissection into modules of uh, these three major super modules of double stranded DNA viruses and these um, two smaller uh, modules. Uh, the two supermodules uh, include uh, very well familiar failed bacteriophages such as T4, T7, Lambda, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, which are, surprising or not, uh, related to the um, animal herpes viruses, uh, which include uh, other uh, very important uh, pathogens. Uh, and the second uh, um, supermodule is the one um, that unites viruses with the so-called double jelly roll uh, major uh, capsid protein, uh, including uh, um, such uh, um, infamous pathogens and smallpox viruses and the related giant uh, viruses. The smaller two modules are the polyoma and papilloma viruses, with which we are already familiar, uh, as well as unusual viruses infecting thermophilic archaea, uh, uh, and these are effectively disconnected from either of the two super modules. I think we have good ideas already on the roads of evolution of these viruses. Unfortunately, I'm afraid there is no time to discuss this. Um, I wanted to briefly um, touch upon the giant viruses, such as Mimi viruses and Pandora viruses, uh, which has bec have become quite famous over the last decade or, or so, um, and that uh, has been touted as a potential fourth domain of life, possibly originating independently from um, already extinct form um, of cells different from bacteria, eukary eukaryotes, or archaea. What we show by reconstructing the evolution of these viruses is that such Mm, uh, evolutionary scenarios, however, potentially interesting are groundless, and that these giant viruses um, have evolved by capturing multiple genes from the host from much simpler and more typical viruses containing this, uh, that all belong to this 
a double jelly roll capsid protein or super module of DNA viruses. The main trend here, like in RNA viruses, but on a different scale, is genomic complexification by capturing genes. Um, and another point that I like to make in greater detail, but we'll have to make very briefly, is that there are major, despite um, the consolidation of the overall um, organization of the world of viruses, and according to the taxonomy of viruses, of which we'll speak in the last couple of minutes of my, of my lecture today, um, the, despite that, there are major new groups of viruses that remain to be discovered. And some of these discoveries are totally striking, such as, for instance, the most abundant human associated viruses are a good example. Um, the most abundant human associated viruses are not herpes, are not papilloma, um, uh, but are bacteriophages uh, that uh, infect bacteria in, in our intestine. Uh, and in particular, the so-called crustphage like groups, group of viruses. This crustphage has been discovered seven years ago uh, purely by methods of metaviromic by uh, Rob Edwards and colleagues in San Diego State University. And then in our work with my collaborators, we greatly, uh, that virus seemed like an orphan, uh, um, uh, apparently unrelated to any other viruses at the time. With my, with my colleagues uh, in two steps, uh, we have dramatically expanded the family. Um, they have shown uh, that this virus uh, belongs to an expensive family of uh, um, highly diverse uh, viruses that form a big phylogenetic tree in themselves. Here is the original cross phage, and here are relatives from primarily animal associated, but not necessarily from all kinds of habitats. Uh, 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 infecting the bacteria of the phyrum bacteroidetes. Uh, and here is yet another expansion that includes some bacteriophages, this highly unusual strategies of genome expression. As you see, the difficulty um, in the presentation of uh, all these findings is that there is too much information that is becoming apparent uh, through analysis of genomes and metagenomes. Uh, so to conclude, uh, I want to outline the global architecture and megataxonomy of the virus world. Uh, under the pressure of increasing uh, diversity, the ACTV has formally uh, introduced uh, the, higher, uh, the highest level of taxonomy or, uh, above kingdom, which does not exist in cellular life forms. It's called officially realm, uh, and therefore, of these uh, major uh, realms uh, of uh, viruses, each quite large and diverse. Uh, Ribaviria, uh, which includes both RNA viruses and reverse transcribing viruses, Monodnaviria, single stranded DNA viruses, uh, and, and two uh, realms of double stranded DNA viruses that differ, uh, that appear to be unrelated, that differ completely uh, in terms of their. Um, structural modules, the Flodnavaria and Varidna um, uh, viria. Uh, together, these four realms uh, uh, incorporate the, great, uh, the huge majority of all known viruses, but um, very recently, um, already this year, um, two additional uh, realms uh, have been formally recognized, uh, one of which is Ribosi uh, viria, uh, which, consi uh, which uh, um, uh, consists of um, hepatitis delta, another uh, um, uh, important uh, human pathogen with very unusual properties related to viroids. In a sense, this is just an infectious um, uh, RNA, but also encoding structural protein. Uh, um, uh, and uh, something called Edna viria, uh, which includes uh, viruses of uh, hyperthermophilic uh, Krenarchiota, characterized very unexpectedly uh, by the presence of A-form DNA in the virus. Crucially, uh, these are extremely interesting uh, um, realms of viruses, but crucially, uh, they are very small. And my expectation is that the further study uh, and classification of virus diversity uh, will result in many, maybe 10, maybe 20, uh, a certain number 
of additional small um, realms like this, but no major ones anymore. These have been discovered. And this I will just have to um, flip through. Uh, we have um, developed a detailed classification within taxonomy, within each of these realms. Finally, to mention, to stop on the global network of evolutionary relationships in the virus world. I think it's most convenient um, and most informative to show this uh, through um, uh, three layers uh, of entities and information. One of which includes the uh, um, conserved domains in virus hallmark proteins, such as the RRM domain uh, that gives rise to all the replication enzymes, various chi as well as various uh, um, uh, kinds of uh, um, uh, capsid uh, uh, proteins. Uh, the other uh, um, uh, level uh, um, derived from this first one uh, um, includes the, uh, these monophyletic realms of um, um, uh, viruses. And the third level includes these Baltimore clusters that differ in their strategies of genome replication and expression. What we um, uh, see here is a complex relationship whereby uh, um, multiple Baltimore clusters, multiple types of genome expression uh, uh, are brought together within the same monophyletic realm, but conversely, uh, the uh, same Baltimore clusters, such as double-stranded DNA viruses, can be split uh, between as many as four and possibly more different monophyletic realms. This is um, you know, pretty much uh, um, uh, where I stop. Uh, um, I just uh, um, want to emphasize uh, once again the crucial importance of, of metaviromics um, in, the, in our attempts to understand uh, the structure and evolution of the world of uh, viruses. The, Observation, um, which is very um, unexpected to my, I'm now used to it somewhat, but, but used to be very um, uh, unexpected to myself, that we seem to be arriving at a solid and stable overall structure of the virus world. However, of course, um, a variety of major and most fascinating and uh, um, uh, practically important details in this overall scheme remain to be uh, uh, filled in. Many quote unquote mysterious viruses remain, remain to be investigated. And finally, we are actively engaged in deep reconstructions of the ancient virus, including those of the last common ancestor of eukaryotes and even the last universal cellular ancestor. I think this is where I stop uh, and it would be unrealistic to acknowledge all uh, lab members and collaborators who have been involved uh, in different um, aspects of our exploration of the virus world. But I want to uh, uh, mention this group uh, who have been directly involved um, in this synthesis on the global organization Megataxonomy of the Virus World that we published last year, and most particularly uh, Mark Kropovich and uh, Valerian Dole, who have been my uh, uh, partners uh, in, in the study of different aspects of virus evolution over many years and without whose contributions um, nothing would have been done. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm more than happy to address any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, uh, Eugene, for this uh, very deep, comprehensive, intriguing and exciting talk. Now, we can ask some questions which we uh, received by email. First of all, I want to begin from my questions. Will you please uh, comment on relation uh, between uh, virus population and vaccination rate and uh, mutations uh, Certainly, they are related to each other, and lockdown, of course, related to our present day, since we live in the world of coronavirus. I sincerely hope that it's coronavirus that exists in our world and that 
its existence is becoming less comfortable. Uh, mm, uh, but, mm, but yes, uh, all these uh, certainly, uh, the uh, mutation rate, uh, mm, uh, mutation rates, uh, selection, muta selection mutation balance, uh, uh, and the uh, effective population size effects uh, accordingly, the effects of vaccination and lockdowns uh, are all linked in a single uh, um, population genetic perspective here. Um, um, Alika, uh, um, uh, answering this question full requires a full different lecture. I would be able to give it, but on another occasion. Uh, mm, uh, so very briefly, mm, uh, mm, um, very, 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 very briefly, uh, mm, also, mm, clearly the virus keeps the duct. Uh, mm, we, we incidentally have a paper coming out in a week or two uh, that, that gives a catalog of positively selected mutations uh, in the virus genome. It's not all that small. It's not huge. Mm, um, mm, well, things have to be kept in perspective. Uh, and the primary force uh, that affects the evolution of anything, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, is purifying selection. Uh, the selection process eliminates um, less fit variants, but there is active positive selection um, adaptation uh, that occurs on tens of sites in, in, the, in the genome, quite many. Uh, um, uh, um, a minority, but it's significant. Uh, um, importantly, there are also uh, um, widespread epistatic interaction between, between these sites whereby uh, um, uh, evolution affects not a single mutation, but combination. That's about uh, um, uh, mutation and um, uh, adaptation. Uh, um, someti um, sometimes it's observed that, you know, the, the evolution of the virus is mostly neutral and the conclusion is made that there is no adaptation. That's certainly not true. Adaptation continues. One of the key reasons why adaptation um, uh, 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 keeps going at a sufficiently alarming pace um, um, uh, is uh, the fact that through a combination of circumstances, uh, the virus population in the world has become very large. Accordingly, the standing variation in that population is also very large. And um, simply by Fisher's fundamental theorem of um, uh, natural selection, uh, uh, the, the rate of selection-driven evolution is proportional to the standing variation. Uh, um, uh, and therefore, uh, um, um, and standing variation itself uh, um, um, is, is proportional um, um, uh, to the effective population size uh, um, multiplied by mu the mutation rate. Uh, mm, very basic facts that, however, are often overlooked. Uh, mm, hence, the effect of vaccination, the effects of vaccination, and the effects of lockdown or lack thereof. Uh, all these measures lead uh, mm, to the decrease of the mm, uh, uh, of the effective population size of the virus uh, and accordingly lower the standing variation and decrease the virus's uh, um, um, ability to adapt. Mm, uh, therefore, mm, vaccination is the best, it, it just cuts it off and the faster, importantly, the faster it cuts it off, the better. Because, uh, mm, uh, mm, in, in partial vaccinated people, in, and then in unvaccinated, especially in partially vaccinated people or in immunocompromised people or, or that have been vaccinated. Or, or there is uh, the most dangerous type, uh, um, the most dangerous type of selection occurs, namely the selection for escape variants. 
so far, um, variance that escape, let's say, uh, um, so far, we have not fortunately observed um, escape variance with very high effect, uh, efficient escape variance with very high effect, uh, which suggests that um, uh, um, these evolutionary pressures to avoid the neutralizing anti antibodies by retaining the ability to uh, um, efficiently bind uh, the receptor are not very easily compatible. But nevertheless, uh, and this is cause for some degree of optimism, uh, um, in particular with respect to the efficiency of the vaccination campaign. Uh, um, but uh, um, not a reason to relax because we may still see such variants. Um, um, uh, and what to say, uh, as, as, as I said, it's crucial to decrease the effective population size of the virus. And in the abs at least in the absence of vaccination, these quarantine, uh, reasonable quarantine measures uh, uh, have been very important to achieve that goal. They retain some importance now, uh, but as vaccination proceeds, very fortunately, this, the importance of the contribution of such measures is decreasing. Not, not a short answer, but these are important. Yeah, yeah, thank you. This is, yeah, of course. So we have some questions from uh, participants. Please. Uh, do evolutionary mutations display reversibility? In, in principle, yes. There is no, nothing intrinsically uh, irreversible about uh, mm, mutations. In reality, um, mm, uh, this is rare because uh, mm, uh, there are mm, so many epistatic interactions between different sites in any evolving genome that usually if, there, if uh, an evolving organism or evolving virus survives a mm, deleterious Mutation, it's not by direct reversal, but by suppression that accounts are expected. Thank you. The next question uh, is the following Did the observed SARS CoV 2 mutations display correlated patterns? Well, I have already answered that. Yes, they do. Quite extensive patterns of correlation between different mutations, in particular between some mutations, uh, both um, for mutations within the uh, spike protein genes, within the nuclear protein genes, and between those. Okay, thank you. Which is the type one envelope viruses should we worry about future outbreaks from other family members as SARS-CoV-2? Uh, we absolutely, and necessarily should. Mm, mm, question is, uh, mm, uh, which viruses? Uh, mm, uh, and certainly the uh, mm, uh, coronaviruses are a reservoir, uh, mm, uh, but so are the uh, so are flaviviruses. Mm. The, the, these, these diseases like dengue and West Nile, et cetera, uh, mm, uh, tend to be uh, mm, less devastating. Uh, they, they, they can be terrible on an individual basis, but less devastating epidemiologically because these are vector transmitted by them. Um, mm, if, if a virus comes from um, mm, the Flavia virus that somehow uh, mm, uh, becomes uh, mm, human to human transmittable, that's eminent danger. So far, fortunately, we have not seen uh, many uh, mm, uh, such uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, viruses. Uh, and, and then, and then uh, negative strand RNA viruses, in particular new uh, mm, uh, mm, um, species and strains of phyloviruses related to Ebola and Marburg as well, they are all certainly require Watch. 
The next question is, what are the keys to preventing and combating future pandemics? Yeah, I try to, I try to describe the broad virus world, but questions are about the pandemic. I understand. Uh, well, and I must, I must say that, you know, epidemiology, uh, we, have, we have expanded our work uh, in, the, in the last year, evidently. We have done in particular a lot on coronavirus adaptation. But I should say that epidemiology generally is not my specialty. That has to be uh, admitted uh, uh, right, right away. Uh, so, so it's more like, you know, informed common sense uh, things that I can somewhat informed common sense things that I can uh, mm, uh, say. But there are um, mm, uh, evidently many lessons. And one is, 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 is monitoring. We, it, it's, it's a big challenge. But I think it's not unsurmountable uh, mm, to uh, mm, monitor the environments uh, mm, with which humans get in touch, in particular, uh, mm, uh, through globalization. Uh, mm, uh, deforestation and the like, uh, and identify candidates and, and, and develop methodologies to identify candidates. We are not there, and it's not easy, uh, but in a somewhat longer perspective, it is doable. Uh, mm, and that's, that's one key. Uh, mm, the, other, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, the other uh, mm, uh, one is evidently these quarantine strategy and the very simple lesson uh, that uh, if it is, uh, when it is done swiftly and decisively, it is far more efficient and uh, eventually far less painful uh, than if, uh, you know, the, the drastic measures are introduced later. Uh, mm, and, and the third, this is very obvious, but it's just, just uh, you know, just a wonderful breakthrough with um, the creation of RNA vaccines, um, uh, whereby whatever appears, whatever is captured, hopefully at an early stage, um, um, the um, vaccine can be created now very, very quickly uh, um, uh, without turning to the um, uh, difficult, uh, time consuming processes and dangerous processes of virus um, adaptation. So this is a great, mm, uh, great breakthrough, scientific breakthrough, which is, by the way, uh, um, underlain by, by important fundamental um, observations on what makes um, um, mRNA translatable and uh, stable um, once transfected into cells. There are lots, lots of fascinating observations you know, on these requirements. So, so, um, so I think these these achievements and these and these challenges. I cannot, as 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 I as I say, I cannot go deep into too deep into this. Not only because of the lack of time, but also because I'm not an expert in epidemiology. Last questions. Uh, last question. Do we know that if other coronavirus had a similar virulence patterns at a certain stage of the evolution as in SARS-CoV-2? Well, there, there are or not, we should expect another virus with similar characteristics. Mm, I would say, given the diversity of coronaviruses in nature, this is highly likely. Moreover, um, we cannot rule out the possibility, the, the, the scary possibility, um, that um, uh, a virus, the perhaps less likely but scary possibility, uh, that a virus with a high case fatality ratio, uh, as, such as MERS, uh, but the transmissibility infectivity features of SARS-CoV-2 emerges at some point, and then we might face a truly devastating epidemic. It's less likely, the combination of these properties is less likely, but given the vast reservoir 
How can we rule it out? But one have to be very watchful of these things. Mm -hmm. I don't see more questions. So no, it's fairly it's fairly late in Turkey now. <laughs> so yeah. if there are no more questions, perhaps we can stop here. What do you think? I'm 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 delighted to to answer questions as long as we keep coming. But if they are not, then thank you all very much. <laughs> thank you very much. It was our pleasure and honor to listen to to your lecture seminar today. I hope we will repeat this in many cases in person in future. So well, thank you very much, Alikram. Yeah. Very hopefully we repeat this. Uh, in person, but um, virtual is also fairly effective, I think. Yeah. That's much, true. much less fun, yeah. but fairly effective. That's true. That's true. All right. So, thank you very much.